Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about how the two titanium wedges were made for crippling depression. I have two variants. I have a thinner wedge, which is lighter weight that is made to use with the discs. This is about an eighth of an inch thick titanium, 6AL4V grade 5 titanium. That's about three millimeters thick. And I also have the thicker, beefier one that I use with the overhead bar. And this one is about eight millimeters thick or about a quarter of an inch. In this video, I want to focus primarily on the bending of both of these because when I first started this project with the wedges, I kind of looked around, did a little bit of research, and couldn't really find much about how to bend titanium and what was really involved. Titanium is an interesting material because it's very springy, it's very hard, it's very tough, and if you just bend it on its own, it can snap quite readily, so you need to apply some heat. And I really wasn't sure what kind of bend radius I'd get, how much heat was necessary, so Instead of kind of explaining all that, I just want to show you the process of how these two wedges were made. Thankfully, I have video on both of these, uh, courtesy of Rocky Mountain Water Jets. They are the company that cut these and then also did the bending. So they were gracious enough to let me film on their premises for um, this one being made. This one was made um, quite some time ago, but I do have footage of Rumham's wedge being uh, made, which is a similar, same material and a similar thickness to this. So let's dive right in into how the wedges were made for crippling depression. Both of these wedges were cut from titanium blanks that look something like this. This is the um, blank that this was cut out of. I get all my metal from an eBay seller called Sacken Metals out of California. They do a lot of cutoffs for titanium and I trust that it is actual real grade five titanium. Uh, I'll put a link down below, but if you just search eBay for titanium plate, they're pretty much the number one seller on there. So I get these titanium plates in, bring it to my water jet cutter, and they cut them. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details on water jet cutting, because that's not really the scope of this video. I do plan on making a separate video that explains why you'd use a water jet cut, why you'd use a laser, and why you'd use a plasma. Uh, generally, water jet cutting is a little bit more expensive than the other two options, but it doesn't impart any heat on the outside of the cut, which is kind of nice, and it leaves a clean edge, so there is that. I have a little bit of footage of it being cut. It's you know, relatively uninteresting, but for those of you unfamiliar with how a water jet works, it's basically a high pressure nozzle of water that you have to pierce the material first. It takes a second or two to kind of pierce down through, and then you can go along the contour and cut. It is really good for 2D things like this. This is just simply a 2D straight projection down. You can cut actually quite thick and you can cut pretty much any material. The um, thing to note is the water is actually not doing the cutting. There is a um, granite abrasive that is fed into the nozzle and that is actually what's doing the cutting. So the water is just a conveyance. Um, I said granite, garnet, garnet is the material that is used to cut. So the water is just really a conveyance for that garnet to go through and cut. So it's kind of just like a uh, water powered um, saw essentially that is going through and doing the cut, which is pretty interesting. Once the parts are cut out from the stock with the water jet, it's time to move back into the welding shop and start the bending. I wanna show you the wedge for rum ham being bent first because it's a lot thinner and um, it's probably closer to what a lot of people watching this video are gonna find useful. The wedge for rum ham is about um, eighth inch thick, just the same as the smaller wedge that I have, and it bends pretty easily if you get enough heat on it. All of the bending was pretty much done freehand. You've got a uh, large metal welding table that everything was clamped to, and then they just used um, a pair of clamps on the other end, heated it up, and just bent. The issue that they had previously on this was they didn't wait for it to get hot enough. You really need the titanium so to be glowing breath, hot before you start bending it. Once it starts bending, it really doesn't take that much force. And you can see here in this video that once it's glowing hot, you can really just kind of very easily bend it up into place. 
Now, there's a lot of uh, more technical information about this. I think the um, bend back ratio or the rate is like five degrees. So if you bend it, you kind of have to over bend it by five degrees because it will kind of relax down a little bit. So if you're looking for very precise bends, you might want to keep that in mind. But as you can see, the process is relatively straightforward. It's just a matter of heating it up till it's glowing slowly and gently bending it until you reach your desired angle and then repeating if you need to to add a little bit more of a bend to it. Yeah, that, that makes me feel a little bit more confident with the thick piece. So that's pretty much all there is to it for the thinner material. The one side is done and they're just gonna flip it around and do the other side. I did get a closer shot for the other side and I'm gonna include this here just so you can see a better angle of how the whole process looked when it's being bent. So this is what the process looks like for bending thinner titanium. Anything from like an eighth inch, three millimeter, two millimeter, one millimeter, that process should look largely the same. You just need to make sure that it's clamped down to something that's not combustible like wood, clamp it down, give it something to bend along. You saw in the video, there was a um, nice like steel rod that we were bending against. Get it heated to where it's glowing orange and then just very slowly and gently bend it along that radius. And it's pretty simple. As long as you don't try and force it and make sure it's hot enough, it should bend the way that you want it to. Now, we thought that the process would be largely the same for the quarter inch, but it turns out the quarter inch can hold significantly more heat and we had an issue getting it up to that orange glowing temperature. So let's take a look at what it took to bend the quarter inch plate. The setup for the thicker material was pretty much identical to the other piece. We just clamped it down to the table, clamped a little rod along the side that we were going to bend against and applied heat. But as you can see here, no amount of heat was ever getting this to a glowing red. I could let this video go for another like five or so minutes, but it would get pretty boring. Um, we sat there for about 10 minutes with that same torch and it just never really got to a point to where it started becoming pliable. So we ended up having to go a different route. More heat was the key. What we ended up doing was having the oxygen acetylene torch on top. So that was heating it from the top. And then there was a map torch from the bottom. So it was heating from the top and bottom at the same time. The issue was is because this was clamped to a metal table, all the heat was very quickly dissipating into everything that it was kind of clamped to. So it was a matter of applying heat from both surfaces so that right at that seam where we were trying to bend, it had even heat throughout it. And it did take about, um, I think according to my timestamp on the video, it was somewhere around 15 minutes of heat put into this before it started to give a little bit. But once the heat was in that seam, it was pretty much the same as the other one. It was um, relatively easy to bend that lip up, as you can see. Oh, that looked good. What? That looks good. Right there? Yeah, it's bending. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I thought you meant that enough. Once the first side was done, we had a much better idea of what the process looked like. We knew that it took somewhere around 10 minutes of heat to get it to that glowing state to where it was able to be bent. So I'm just gonna kinda let you watch some of this footage of the second side being bent, just so you can get a better idea of what all is involved in bending a piece that's this thick. You guys are rock stars. 
Once the wedge was bent, it was just a matter of cleaning up the front edge so that it sits flush on the floor. I did this by hand using my belt sander outside, and I just kind of sanded it down on that edge. It created a ton of sparks, which was really fun, and it took probably a couple hours and the piece kept heating up so I'd actually set it down in the snow, cool it off, go back to the sander, and I just kind of kept going at this for, you know, an hour or two until I got the angle just right. You could use an angle grinder for this, I just use my belt sander because that's what I prefer to do. So that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video gives you a better idea of what's involved with bending 8th inch titanium and then also what's involved in bending something a lot thicker like the quarter inch titanium. It's totally possible. When I was doing my research, I got a lot of mixed answers and it's actually a lot simpler than I thought. It's just a lot of heat, a lot of patience, and just nice and slow bends. So, yep. Hopefully you got something out of this. Um, be sure to check out some future videos. I got some interesting stuff coming up. I'm going to be working on some stuff that's substantially larger than this. So be sure to check out my Facebook page for any of those updates and check the description down below for any links and associated things with this video. And as always, thanks for watching.